everybody to Flex Swim Podcast, episode number three. How's it going, guys? It's going. All good, all good. So on today's Hello. podcast, we actually have one of our very first interviews that we're featuring on the pod. Um, we sat down with Maxine Rooney, who is a national teamer for the U.S. national team. He is a 200 freestyler, 400 freestyler, and then when it comes to college and short course swimming, he does a little bit of the sprint stuff. We swam with Maxine at Florida, right? Yeah, yeah. No, and he's a very interesting guy, right? I mean, you guys are going to see on the podcast, but just very open. Yes. Right? Very, sure. and, and, and that's very fun when you talk to someone that he's getting into his personal life. Well, it makes the interview much more fluid, right? It's yeah. Yeah. En- yeah. engaging. Yeah. I would say one of, the, one of the most refreshing things about Maxine is that he doesn't talk a lot about swimming. I mean, he understands swimming is his job. It's his workplace. He comes in, he does his work, he competes extremely well, but he also is way more interested in culture and learning about different things. You know, you'll hear a lot more during the episode, but he talks a lot about like his mental health throughout swimming. Talks a lot about the, you know, gets into something that isn't talked about enough, probably, you know, the person behind the swimmer, you know, it's, you know, Michael Phelps is a person as well as the swimmer you see on TV, you know, same with Maxine Rooney or any of us. Yep. So um, just to preface everybody, this is Maxime Rooney. But before we go into the interview, we just wanted to mention that we have a new stroke clinic up. You can see it on the screen right here. Uh, Check it out. It is Luke Torres over here doing some flip flip turn work. (laughs) Um, So head on over to the channel. Check that out. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please, please, please head over to wherever you consume podcasts. Subscribe. Um, also make sure to leave comments on the videos. Yeah, guys, ask some, ask some questions, right? We're going to be looking at doing maybe some of the shorter questions and it's on separate videos, but if you have like a really great topic, you know, that's something that we'll definitely look at doing a whole show about. Yep. So without further ado, Maxine Rooney. Mm -hmm. How was that? How was growing up in the, in the Bay area with the Pleasanton Seahawks? Oh, I, I consider myself like really lucky first to have grown up in California. Um, but even more so lucky, blessed um, that my club team was like top 20 in the country. Um, yeah. And like we're repeat gold medal club. And I think that a large part of that is because of my coach, Steve. Um, he kind of built the team from the ground up. And he's doing an excellent job. I think his program is like built for repeated success. And mm-hmm. I mean, I see that year in, year out. I still call him like every couple of weeks just to make sure that like we're on the same page when I come back home, like he can expect certain things from me, whether that's like in practice and out of practice. And, um, yeah, Yeah. he's just a big part of my life. He's like a second dad too. So, yeah, I know that's super helpful too. When you have like that type of team to come back to, Yeah, like for the summers, right. When you're not staying here. Did you go back last summer or were you still here? This summer I stayed, um, in Gainesville, uh, just training with Troy, Nesty and Steve. I think it was, it was really important to um, my success and my results at nationals because, um, you know, as we head into this year, um, I felt that staying this summer would not only help me transition coach it, coach-wise, mm-hmm. um, but just set myself up um, in the future because, you know, in 2020, um, I'm going to be, I'm going to have to stay these next couple of summers yeah. just because the Olympics 2020 is coming up and yeah. I just want to put myself in the best possible position. Um, so, yeah, I know. And this yeah. last summer, I mean, this was one of your best summers, right? Yeah, I, I was super happy yeah. with, um, I had a great 100 free, and then I actually got sick, so I was like puking, I lost a lot of weight, and my 200 free and my 100 fly were right on my best, so I can't complain, especially with the circumstances, but um, I just saw that the work I put in, the transition coaching-wise, and um, the things that I implemented are working, so yeah. this year and next year, um, so 2019 and 2020, it's just about kind of progressing stepping up to the next level seeing how good um and how fast i can be for sure no and and going back a little bit i guess right because i mean you've always been amongst the elite right of all summers and i guess coming in how did you feel that transition was for you right i mean obviously yeah into college obviously Mm -hmm. the summer was really good for you Mm -hmm. um college swimming in general is always just this big yeah flat yeah it's just different right i mean it really is different i remember for me it was a huge yeah him yeah, especially, yeah. he was he came from a club that did what like six grand every yeah, practice just singles. singles so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so my my kind of thought moving into college was um, I had a really great training base um, in high school. We did probably nine practices a week. We doubled on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, so we were doing mornings and afternoons. We had a long course and a short course base. We did probably average five to seven k 
um, per practice. Seven K is really pushing it. Yeah. Um, lots of speed work. So I had a great speed base. So when I came to college, um, I really wanted to make sure that my freshman year I transitioned well. Mm-hmm. So just to not only transition well because the weight room was new to me. So kind of yeah. get that under control, make sure the form is like proper. And we have a great weight coach for that, yeah. Matt Delancey. Um, and then I've never done power. So buckets and cords, um, that was all new to me. Um, so making sure my, my freshman year transitioned well, set myself up for future success. Um, sophomore year, last year, um, I wanted to take it up another level. And I think I did. My training was fantastic. I had some of the best sets. I still remember it. And um, it just, when it came down to crunch time at NCAAs, it wasn't my best performances. Um, again, I think there were a couple of factors that were out of my control, but moving forward um, and learning from that meet, I need to be able to focus and kind of compartmentalize in that situation. Um, and now junior year, um, I can't believe it. I'm a yeah. junior already. <laughs> crazy. It goes um, by so quickly. Like, I remember coming in junior year of high school yeah. for my recruiting trip and seeing you guys. <laughs> oh, no, so... No. Um, <laughs> It's gone full circle, man. It's yeah. so crazy. It's I, so crazy. Um, it's it's gonna be a fun year. I'm I'm excited yeah. just because you know everything's like set, and mm-hmm. all I have to do um, is I not only show up, but then work, focus on the details, get those little things right, work hard, support my teammates, and um, yeah, and uh, I think we're we're gonna keep rolling. So, yeah. do you no. feel like you're inclined now that you're a junior to take on more of a leadership role, or are you more so kind of leading by example at this point? I think a little bit of both. Um, you know. I've always thought like, and this is kind of, I guess you could say me being laissez-faire a little bit, but I I don't ever want to be the one captain or the one leader. And so I don't want to assume that position at all. Um, I think everyone on the team has that responsibility. Um, So we've seen our, our, our senior step up. We've seen a lot of our own junior class, freshmen and sophomores. I think it comes, I mean, top down and down top down up. So um, it comes full circle definitely in that way that, Everyone needs to step up. Everyone needs to be, like, not only pushing each other, encouraging, but um, kind of giving proper feedback, um, constructive yeah. criticism. So. I mean, man, last year's summer senior class was probably one of the senior classes that you wanted to be under. Like, that's that's kind of the leadership and, you know, setting the example as well as kind of meeting that, that top end of, you know, performing in NCAAs. And, you yeah, know. absolutely. That was, they like, those were the guys, the yeah. the heavy hitters, the the go tos, and um, when it's crunch time at meets, and I mean, especially like at SECs, you got Caleb anchoring the relay, seventeen eight, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And um, I mean, Mark clutched with the two hundred breast win, Jan clutched with the two hundred IM victory at NC. So a lot of hype, just a, a lot, lot of hype, hype. Yeah. a lot of talent, and they work hard for it, so that's very well deserved. Um, but with that said, like because they're gone now, it's a big, big like kind of gap. And um, it takes everyone to fill it. So for sure, yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. I remember one of the talks we had, right, was about like how big of a hole you want to leave in the yeah. program, and, and from a positive aspect, obviously. Yeah. But um, and I guess that's exactly what you're talking exactly. about, right? You gotta that, fill, yeah. you gotta fill that hole now. I think what was it? Soft, I, our sophomore <clears throat> year, Billy Donovan came in. And yeah. This was like the last year before he went over to the Oklahoma City Thunder, and he came in. and He gave that speech. And supposedly Troy went over to the basketball team and gave a similar speech, not like the his not the Billy Donovan default speech, but Troy's version of it. And it was just a matter of like everybody, you know, makes a certain level of you know impact on the t- on the program, whether it's big or small, it's an yeah. impact. Yeah. Um. And you know, you want to be able to fill someone else's hole. So someone yeah. like you know Caleb Jessel leaving last year is like that's a big hole to fill. Yeah. Um. But you know, it doesn't have to be one person that has to fill the hole. It's more so like the team, the entire team stepping up. You know, uh, a solid. 200 and 400 freestyle relay and NCAAs can easily fill the hole of a Caleb Jessel anchoring. Yeah, exactly. And I think like when we talk about contributions, um, say like I'm having a terrible practice and someone's contributing to me or I'm having a great practice and I'm contributing to someone else. I think it just picks up that person and we're able to like to yeah. move forward and grow together. So that's what we're really looking forward to do because I mean, there's going to be tough days. There's going to be like really hard days, really hard meets. And I mean, Last year, the word was adversity um, and kind of like battling and working through that adversity as a team. I think that's what we need to be able to do because, um, you know, I think we are very talented. We have a like great depth of talent. Um, we have a lot of guys that can be great. And I think we do have a championship NCAA championship team in the making. Um, it's just about, you know, it's not about what we do in the water, like physically, because everyone's training, you know, we're it's Florida. Mm-hmm. We train the most, the hardest, day in, day out. 
And um, I think when it comes to championship time, it's about um, kind of differentiating ourselves from others through that championship mentality. And that comes from battling adversity, kind of picking each other up. Yeah. And, um, no, and that, yeah. that was the point, actually, you know, when I, I was trying to touch on earlier, just the whole team dynamic aspect of it, right? Because that's it. To me, other than just like you were saying, the physical aspect of swimming a lot more than I was when I, you know, from high school to college, just it's so different, right? Because you're going through these harder practices, but you have this family that you're building, right? And it's just such a different dynamic. Um, I remember you're struggling, but everyone's struggling. So you, the whole team just starts getting so close like a family, really. Yeah. And that, that really plays into the whole championship mentality yeah. you're talking about, right? Like. It's exactly. like everyone is family and everyone is in this together. Yeah. Um, did you feel that kind of connection after doing PJs? Because we did PJs our freshman oh, year. Oh, yeah. And now it's kind of... Yeah, it was actually... I, I thought it was a lot of fun and um, I really enjoyed... Um, I really like like that type of work and that type of teamwork. I think um, there was a lot of like benefiting factors for us um, because, I mean, obviously a lot of true colors were shown and um some people got angry some people were like frustrated um but at the same time like we had to work together to move forward and like for example we had to pick up boats and uh <laughs> it was it was it was pretty cool but um like if someone wasn't holding it up there and like we'd need to sub in sub out yeah. and um like kind of work through that but if you were on too long that like someone needed to take your spot, so yeah. it was well, just like kind of working through it. I guess just to clarify, it. just to yeah. clarify, guys, so people don't really know what we're talking yeah. about, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. kind of just brief them on, uh, you know, you guys took a trip, right? Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. So uh, PJs are, um, it was um, basically they are Navy SEALs with medic, like medic background. Um, mm -hmm. They're the ones that um, their quote is so that they may live, and um, they're the ones called when someone needs to be saved. So. They literally can be set up in any situation, and they don't fail. That's what they're trained to. They, that's what they're trained to do. They, they want to save people, not die at the same time. And they're the ones like um, in the field that, like, kind of execute procedures to save people. Um, so high pressure. Um, yeah, remember and it's like last resort similar. type of deal, right? Last they're resort, thrown in yeah. there like last resort. They're dropped yeah. into like combat areas, like yeah. desert, or they're mm -hmm. they're obviously trained on in you know yeah air air and mm -hmm. sea and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're they're complete badasses basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're. I, I was kind of blown away by some of the stories they were telling, and yeah, it was just incredible. I feel like backing it up a little bit to you mentioned about strength training. Did you have a, any, you know, strength and conditioning before you actually got into college swimming? Yeah, so up until I was, um, I'd say, 15, probably a sophomore in high school, um, we were just doing some chords, a little bit of med wall work, just very, really, really light dry land. Yeah. And then sophomore year, um, there's actually a guy named Nick Folker. Um, he works with Bridge Athletics. Oh, okay. And um, he came in, assessed all of, like, my – my like, kind of group mates because um, we were in a senior elite group so there's about 30 of us and assessed our needs so strength um, flexibility um, mobility in our shoulders kind of hip mobility and everything and uh, he created a program specifically for each individual and I think that's um, kind of why I started taking off because yeah. um, some of the needs and stretching and flexibility for me um, that was huge and then a lot of um, mobility in not only my traps, shoulder blades, and everything um, that was addressed, and I was really able to take off. So a lot of the exercises were um, plyometric based, um, a lot of explosive work, and a lot of just core and key strength exercises. So and now that you're here, you're doing power lifting, mm -hmm. Olympic lift style stuff. Yeah, just we, like full on adding muscle every yeah, week. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's I, I actually really enjoy the weight room. Um, Matt keeps it really light, really fun, really aggressive too. Um, but yeah, I was uh, never exposed to that in, I mean, high school. Um, so we do a lot of Olympic lifting from hang cleans, cleans off the blocks, uh, power cleans uh, occasionally. Um, we squat, we snatch. Yeah. So yeah. That, I remember um, that was one thing for me, um, especially freshman year, just you know being exposed to weightlifting, which is, for me was the same case scenario, right? I had never been exposed to that, and 
you know, the whole nutrition aspect of it too, right? Because yeah. we provided all these protein shakes and whatnot and, you know, bod pod and, you know, all these resources that we have here. I remember I put on like, you know, 15 pounds of Luke, like muscle. Yeah, yeah. Luke you know, my, probably, my first year. He was the and textbook then, benefit from weightlifting. I think our freshman year, he came in, you know, looking like a freshman on campus. That's not really, not yeah. really athletic. I think I can say that. Yeah. And then within the first week or two, you, you just like the shoulders broaden out. He became a swimmer, like within the first few weeks of just like doing a little bit of hang cleaning and, you know, squatting, yeah. all this kind of stuff. But I guess, my, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> pull ups. I love the pull ups. But I guess my question to you is like, did you like, have you gone through that at all? Because yeah, I mean, I definitely gained a little bit away from freshman year. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Cause I keep my nutrition really clean. I started cooking for myself um, yeah, sophomore right. year, which is really great because I just first you're ripping a lot of money. If you go out every yeah, night to eat, that's for sure. um, yeah. Like last night I spent like 15 to 20 bucks on Chipotle and I can't do that every <laughs> night. So, oh, but, but. um, yeah, just being able to fuel myself and like go to Sam's club, it's like 18 bucks for like 20 pounds of chicken. So yeah, I, yeah, chicken and rice is super easy. And if Not you go to Bento, it it's like, big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you go to Bento, it's like 15 bucks. So, um, just cooking myself, was, cooking for myself was huge. Um, but I'd say, I think from freshman year to now, um, I came in, I think around either 168 or 178. I don't, I really mm -hmm. don't remember. I think 178. And right now I'm probably 188, 190. Nice. Yeah. Um, I'm at an ideal weight. My optimal, Matt yeah. wants me to be around 193 to 195, I think, um, just because we're going towards more sprinting. Yeah. yeah. So I need a little more um, mass on me, but I, I like staying generally lean. Um, that's just kind of my body type. Like my grandpa is really lean. My mom tells me all the time and that's kind of where I get my physique from. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're a, you're a, also congratulations. You are a national teamer. Thank you. So Thank you. I'm super excited. I to guess back. it's kind of what do you, do you start training towards what's brought you the success or is it more so you're still looking to expand yourself and you know, you're, you're national teamer for the hundred freestyle, right? Correct. There's multiple yeah. events. A uh, hundred free this year. Um, in the past in 2015, I was national teamer for the 200 free. Okay. And last year I was almost national team for the hundred fly. Um, so next year, I mean, the goal would be to be, uh, on national team for multiple events. Yeah, um, I mean, just, staying in that, staying in the talks for the hundred freestyle, obviously plays. Yeah. It bodes very well for twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. But also, obviously, you're you're also two hundred freestyler. Yeah, you mm -hmm. can add something like a hundred butterfly. Are you thinking about training in terms of um, increasing, you know, that hundred freestyle to get up higher in the rankings, or is it more so just full on assault on everything? You know, I'm, I'm going to be pushing for the two free hundred free hundred fly, yeah. adding something else to there. I mean, my events are primarily. I, I'd say this summer I was full, full, fully focused on 100, 200 freestyle and butterfly. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say that's gonna be my primary fo focus moving forward. Like I'm not gonna explore breaststroke. Um, I'm not gonna yeah. explore backstroke. <laughs> too um, late, too late. Yeah, so uh, those are those are the ones I'm gonna focus on. Um, okay. So yeah, 100, 200 free and fly. And how was that That's this past summer's nationals? I mean, it, it seemed like it was pretty high emotion, especially with getting on the team for the 100 freestyle and being up against some of these big dogs that, you know, we've been kind of looking up to our whole swimming careers. Yeah, I, well, so first, um, again, I was super happy. Uh, I went 48-2. Um, I dropped six to seven tenths from 2015. So my first best time in a, like, long course kind of national setting in a couple of years, which is great. Um, for me, I was, it was more important, um, and I was a little off my goal time actually, um, but I counted that to being just kind of sick and losing weight. Yeah, um, but course. for me, that the, why that was so I'd say emotional, important, um, is because like I said, I hadn't dropped the time in three years. Um, so the things that I had changed over the summer in regards to either like kind of working harder um actually i wouldn't even say working harder rather working smarter um working on some details getting yeah. the details right setting up myself in practice where i can see what i'm doing in practice is what's going to translate over to my competition in my race yeah. right and and what that looks like is so we're doing a set of 850s off the blocks um we that was a common set this summer we usually do two or three maybe four rounds and um i'd wanted to put myself in a position where every 50 um i would feel that last 50 burn mm -hmm. right so i was going off the blocks probably um it was like 23 highs 24 lows and wow. um just because i wanted like my legs to feel yeah. the way it would in the last yeah. 50 right and um what that, i mean i guess that can translate also not only to a 200 but a 100 because in a 100 to in today's world you need to come back under 25 to be like 
even in the game and relevant yeah. for a gold medal in the future i'll yeah, say definitely. right because i mean the last two olympics everyone was under 25 yeah so um just training towards that yeah. and making it purposeful um that was the big change um and a couple other uh, small but big details for me um and that's what all made the difference so yeah mm -hmm. i think you hit on something pretty good that i feel like a lot of people don't talk about a lot in swimming which is like I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it the plateau, but it's when, you know, you're not experiencing best times every single yeah, summer. Yeah. And we all get used to it when we're in age group swimming. Like when, you know, we're 13, 14, we're dropping like 20 Ten seconds, seconds yeah. two for you, like all this kind of stuff. And then you kind of get to this point where you're at, you're clearly at this elite level. You know, you're, you're competing collegiately in national championships, national championship level. Um, you're competing at nationals every, every year, international competition, world juniors. Um, you know, what, what mentality do you kind of take if you go into a summer fully loaded, you know, everything's going to go well. And then you leave, you know, a few tenths off your best, something yeah. like that. Yeah. I mean, so that's kind of what happened the last two years. Cause I knew like, obviously like being a Florida, you can't not work hard. Yeah. So I was working hard. I was hitting my paces. I was hitting times that like in practice where I was like, okay, I can, I can see myself going my goal times. Right. And so um, one of the big things for me that I worked on this summer meant was like my, my mental game, I'll say. Um, so I actually went to Greece right after NCAAs and I read a book called The Slight Edge. That was an incredible book. Um, I definitely recommend. Um, a lot of people joke about it on the team, but um, it was, it was um, I'd say life changing because, I mean, not only does it help me um, in the pool, but outside of the pool as well um, in regards to like, I'm trying to learn lang two languages right now. Um, I'm taking a French class for school, um, but I mean, still, I need habits. And um, what is the premise of the book? It's um, <clears throat> it's like daily habits um, okay. that kind of daily habits that make the difference. And um, uh, I don't really remember the phrase. And that's pro I I was gonna plan on reading it like once a year. Yeah. So come after NCAA's again, I'll probably read it um, just because I want to get those reminders and the things that I pointed out um, that helped me. Um, but uh, one of the big things in that book that really resonated within me was um, there was a quote it was um, uh, the things that made you successful before will continue to make you successful and I think like in saying that like my freshman year was a big transition obviously I was moving from California to Florida and like call high school to college um, and I think like oh, I need to make such big adjustments right um, that's uh, for me that was actually incorrect uh i think that the things that made me successful in elite in high school can still make me successful in elite in college and um <clears throat> that i didn't need to change as much as i thought i did mm -hmm. so that was that was huge for me because kind of getting back to those habits getting them back like on top of not only like the physical training um and kind of what i used to do was like i i could remember 2014 and 2015 why my 2015 was so great was because every single day i knew like for if we did like a sixth grade practice i could re like recite all my stroke counts so oh, wow. like <laughs> yeah. every lap um like how many kicks i know all my times and i still know some of my times from high school and the sets i did like i remember going three eight hundreds and it was negative split and the first one was 740 next one was 727 next one was 720 right mm -hmm. and just being able to throw those times that and knowing and understanding that like my mind can commit myself to doing those things and making those habits but also my mind can um uh <clears throat> like i think my mind's my greatest asset and um i was trying to turn my brain off too many times mm -hmm. just because i think that it was getting in the way but understanding that there's time to think and there is time not to think mm -hmm. and understanding that when i'm at um like say nationals this summer or come NC2As or Georgia Tech invite that I've thought about it a lot in practice. I've put all the time, the effort, and like I've counted all my strokes in practice. But when I'm behind those blocks, just think about like being present, focus on my breathing and not thinking about the technical details that I can get right. So that was, that was huge for me. No, and that is a really cool switch of perspective, right? That I guess the book gave you just in terms of, like you said, you ha you're going through this transition period and you think you have to change all these things, right? Like you have to do things differently. But yeah. like you said, you know, you were being successful before. So yeah. why not, you know, keep those same habits or, yeah. you know, 
I wonder what it is behind that. that because I think I experienced the same. I think we both we were both roommates freshman year and like yeah. going into our freshman year of UF, we were just like, oh my god, we need to you know get in this this extra crazy shape and we need to go for runs, all this kind of stuff. And like, yeah, some of that's true, but yeah. at the same time, you've you've led yourself to the success to get you to UF. So exactly, you know, mm-hmm. it's not a it's not like you're you're coming into this place where you're just throwing your mind out and you're just becoming this this new person. Yeah, I wonder what goes into that because I think everybody somewhat thinks that like yeah. I'm going to college and mm-hmm. and I think it's like um I've always like uh, I actually spoke to um freshman student athletes a couple weeks ago and I told them that these four years are like the biggest growth years of your life and I'm 100% in agreement with that and I think that's like what I thought I needed in order to grow um for some people that's maybe what they need a change um mm-hmm. but um, I, I just figured out for myself like this year that like I didn't need to change that much for myself to grow in swimming. I, I could keep going and naturally my, my like not only my body physically, but my mind mentally would just grow normal. Like it would just yeah, grow. Adjust, um, yeah. So yeah, just on its own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I really like that. Um, and then outside of like the athletic side of things, how is academic going for college great yeah so um i'm a junior um i've decided on my major i'm an english major um so this first semester of my junior year started taking classes i really enjoy um i'm in a five credit french class love it i get to speak with my mom dad and one of my best friends speaks french um i'm in the bible as literature it's actually really interesting um but teachers sometimes puts me to sleep um (laughs) and then i have two online classes that are basic gen ed requirements um but i'm super interested um in school now and i actually it's the first time i've had classes every day and i actually like want to go to class because um i know these are things that are not only going to help me in the future but i'm really interested in it and uh, i think that attributes a, a lot to like declaring my major and i'm yeah. a junior now well, just the so, overall mood too yeah. right i mean when you're interested. yeah what's made you what, what brought you to declaring that major I'm- yeah um so i originally um well i'd say uh my joke is I changed majors five times. Um, I came in <laughs> a biology pre-med and then I changed it to kind of regular bio because I didn't want to go pre-med. Then I wanted to go to business and I wanted to go to philosophy. And eventually um, I was thinking about communications and journalism, public relations. Um, so uh, I took classes in each of the subject subjects and kind of slowly found my interest. So like with the philosophy, I liked my writing in it and just kind of the depths of that like thought. Um, mm-hmm. When I saw the communications part of it, I really liked the writing again. And I, I just didn't think it was as rigorous for me. Um, so I came to English, I took an English class and I was like, this is it, I'm declaring yeah. my major. And the reason why I chose to be an English major is because I found um, for myself, like I really enjoy writing and I think that in the future, a writing foundation, a speaking foundation, um, with a kind of an English background, will be of great use in any field. Yeah, and um, for sure. right now, I'm I uh, I used to blog. I'm gonna blog, start blogging up again because my um, there was some blog technical difficulties problems. I had to recreate <laughs> it, but um, I uh, I'm excited to move forward and get back to that. Um, I have aspirations of like becoming an author, writing a couple of books, um, of what I don't know yet. <laughs> um, well, actually I have some topics in mind, but, um, I don't know how much of it is nonfiction and a fiction and, um, just a lot of excitement about that because I know that, you know, um, obviously there is a life after college, uh, swimming. And, uh, I know that like when I'm completely satisfied with my, like career of swimming and I'm content and I've done everything I wanted to do in sport that I'm going to have this waiting for me after college. You know, there, uh, there's not going to be kind of like an incomplete part of my heart where, um, I'll need it to be filled with something else because I lost swimming. It's not going to be that way. It's going to be, I'm done with this area of my life. It's I'm, I've done everything I wanted to do. And now I want to move on to something that like Sounds I really enjoy too. Yeah, so, no, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think the the biggest thing behind writers is they always have some form of craziness behind them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, well, first yeah. off, I'll let you I'll let you plug the blog for mm-hmm. for yourself. What what is the the URL? Oh, uh, right now, so uh, it's mprooney.wordpress.com. You'll see probably about twelve posts up, and um, those are the ones that were on my previous blog. I had to change the website and kind of readjust some things because I, the domain got 
actually erased. And so luckily I didn't lose any of the material, but I just had to republish everything. Um, yeah. And uh, I'll be writing again soon. So I love it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we've worked together. I've, we've put some of your stuff yeah. up on. I really appreciate that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I, I, so. I, I appreciate the writing. I think it's really cool to have an, an interesting perspective on, um, obviously you have the writing bug the writing gene but you also kind of bring that into your experience with swimming yeah and i think that's something that's unique because not not many people are doing it um most of what we have in swimming in terms of something to look up to or have kind of like a guiding voice is yeah swim swam yeah and not swim swam yeah that's basically <laughs> yeah. It out there. there's nothing that's really like thoughtful you know and especially you're you're as you've been talking for a little while now is you know you have you put some mental thought into it yeah right swimming shouldn't just be like staring at the blank line and exactly. you know stressing about what what your next meal is going to be or what you know what you have to do for homework yeah. it should be really thought out you know philosophical about why you're actually doing this sport what is it what are you actually getting out of it that kind of stuff and that's the reason why i actually started it is because um i believe like we're relational beings um we were created to be like in relationship with other people and so i think this um uh, means of blogging is a is an effort for me to reach out and to kind of connect with people to show people like kind of what's been on my heart um, and to kind of show them like I'm going through the same stuff like you are um, mm -hmm. just because like I may be here and you may be higher or lower than like where I'm at um, doesn't mean we, we're not going through the same stuff and that's kind of what I wrote about um, that, like my first couple posts um, one called faith one called sports and one called real relationships and um, I'd say drawing from my real relationships posts was that like uh, you know like as we go through this like life together and we struggle um that real relationships are based on that unconditionality that like i'm going to support you no matter what you're going to support me no matter what and so kind of opening up that door through this blog was that's my goal yeah. um so like to encourage and um just kind of to provide people with like a hope and it's and it's awesome that yeah. it gets overlap you know your hobby your passion mm -hmm. with you know like you're saying making an impact right yeah. Out for other people that may yeah, be reading exactly so, yeah i mean it's yeah. an art it's an, it's artistic i'm sure it's just as fulfilling for you to, yeah. to finish up a blog post as mm -hmm. it is for people to read it and kind of relate mm -hmm. to it yeah exactly and actually so when i started blogging and as like i continue to blog um my whole perspective on like art i'll say artist artistry has like changed so when i listen to music now or when i read some other thing or when i see people like create paintings sculptures yeah. Um, I'm actually just blown away because not only do I recognize the the boldness and that creativity, um, but uh, I, I just see that like yeah uh, the boldness and the courageous um, like kind of features. To put yourself in out it. there, and, and so stuff, right? yeah. yeah, I think especially especially writers, I would honestly say, out of like just being critical of all artists out there, um, it to me it seems like the hardest part is being a writer to start something. Right, a painter can buy some paint and throw something. A video producer can click record, but in, but a, a writer has to know what that first word's going to be. They can't just like yeah. scribble on yeah. the keyboard that's a little the bit. That's right a now. Point. I got some writer's right? block. <laughs> there you go. I mean, yeah. that's nothing to be ashamed of. I think I think especially a writer, right? You, most of the work that you don't even see that you can obviously respect is that there's thought behind the first word. Yeah. Like you need to know what you're actually going to be writing about before you actually start writing unless it's just going to be, you know, yeah. journaling. Yeah. Exactly, like having an end, having like a middle end and, and a beginning and having it all flow yeah. and fit together. I mean, so. from that perspective is it like is blogging more of like a tuning up your skills? Is it trying to just get thoughts out? Is it um getting ready for the next big writing, you know? Definitely. I think like <clears throat> uh, for me, I'd say it's create first creating a portfolio. So like if um, in the future anyone wanted to like check out my work to hire me, I yeah. can show them like this this is the type of writing. like there's my grammatical, um, like my, my grammar, my style, that's how I flow. Um, so that's one aspect of it. I'd say that another two really important aspects of it is practice kind of every week or every two weeks or whenever I get to write so that like, I know how to edit, I know how to fine tune it, know exactly what I wanna say. Um, and more, like I said, just to connect with people, kinda, um, and I also think it's like kinda relieving um, for myself that I can kinda put this in the paper so in the future if I'm dealing with the same thing or um, yeah, I just need some encouragement, I can go back and pull from that post too, yeah. so.
Okay. Mm-hmm. What, anything else out there that you're like using as a role model, whether it be writing or art or even swimming? Um, I think sometimes like, um, I, I'd say like, so in regards to like my, in terms of my inspiration, um, for each post, um, like this summer I kind of had an idea for like a mental health thing because, uh, I saw literally one week, um, I don't remember, but like someone Boudin died, um, mm-hmm. and, oh, Anthony, 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 yeah. yeah, and then the next week, someone, uh, it was a, it was a lady that, uh, she, uh, she killed herself, yeah, like a fashion, fashion I, I icon, name. yeah, and I was just like, you know, like, this is incredibly sad, why is this not being addressed, you know, like, why is it that people, like, we talk about it, there's a lot of, like, shows on it, like, 13 Reasons, like, yeah. was, I saw one episode, it messed me up, it yeah. was messed up, period. <laughs> And like, why why is there so much talk and like publicity about this? But there's no action behind yeah. it, you know. Like, and I kind of wanted to address that because like, what are we what are we doing as a society that we're in, like why why can't we get behind these people? You know, yeah. we can talk so much about it. Like, oh, here's the line to call someone, but why don't you be that first line? You yeah. Know? And so that's kind of what was on my heart. I never did it because I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want it to come out like kind of aggressive or. Uh, I just judgment, yeah. yeah so or judgmental at all because that's not my goal um but just really Sometimes just bringing attention right yeah and bringing topic, attention yeah. and that's kind of I'd say you know where my heart is led is where my inspiration comes from yeah. so if I see something like that that's kind of partly where my I know you published the love in action series is because I saw pieces of that and so I wanted to fit that in with a bit of fiction so I created a small story and then I backed it up with like okay this is I think what love in action looks like you know yeah. getting behind that person so and you brought perspective to it with mm-hmm. your background and everything it's, mm-hmm. it's yeah. kind of this so I didn't want to use swimming but I used running because I mean we're very similar on yeah. an objective based time so definitely yeah yeah do you, do you think being at such an elite level in swimming having some form of an outlet like this helps do you think it's something that every swimmer needs or you know have you obviously you've seen your own benefit from it but you, do you think it's kind of like cookie cutter where everybody should try and find their own artistic thing or maybe people just aren't as creative and they just need hobbies in general to get away from their elite absolutely life? i think like you know at whatever level of sport you're at um i think outlets are great because um and i think actually sometimes your sport should be your outlet um i think my my pastor he's always said there's like three r's for sport um one of the most important ones is what i talk about real relationships but another um important one is real release you know we go through our day and like you want to go to the pool and kind of just like shut down and work hard and get that real physical release from that stress um but obviously when you get to this certain level it gets harder there's more pressure coaches want you to perform teammates want you to perform so i think there are definitely other hobbies that you can explore um right now like i said so i'm writing but i mean i also picked up the ukulele because i visited the philippines this summer so um it's actually it's just pretty fun just kind of for the time being whether it be 20 30 minutes i just kind of take my mind away from everything yeah and i just play or i just write and i just listen to music it can be anything just whatever kind of just soothes you and kind of gets you in a place where you have some peace so. yeah i remember to us that was because ryan and i used to live together so we'd jam out you know each yeah, of us pick up guitar. the guitar pretty sweet. Yeah. 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 a little bit of like rhythm a little bit of solo <laughs> yeah. like and it was always after after practice right yeah. like we'd training we'd, table yeah we'd practice we'd training table and then we'd meet each other out on like the patio and we'd just be strumming like playing some notes yeah. no words would be said just <laughs> sit down and just start like plucking around it That's was like cool how yeah. we gotta how do we gotta cope with what we do right yeah I yeah mean, the ukulele is a little easier because it's four <laughs> strings i was thinking about picking up the guitar but eventually i'm um, eventually oh, maybe later you can ukulele is tough people. it's tough to grab those frets and you'll I, be there i think it's i don't know like my hands when i so i played the guitar when i was 13 uh-huh. and my fingers just didn't stretch that far yeah. but the ukulele i was just like okay this is like pretty easy you know i got the g the c the a minor and that you've got bigger good. hands so, on too yeah <laughs> so well, that's that's really cool. Well, I I appreciate you taking the time with us. I think it was really, that was cool really to, fun. Yeah, to jump into everything cool. about you. Um, you can you know give a, give another shout out to the website, social media, anywhere people can yeah, check you I mean, out. Um, so mprooney.wordpress.com. Um, I'm Maxime Rooney. You can find me anywhere on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I also have a Facebook page that um, I'm using to kind of connect with my like fans, friends, family in the Philippines um so yeah i mean and in the coming year we have college season we can mm-hmm. find you at 
you know, mm-hmm. all University these different Florida, dual meets coming up. Meets. University of Florida. <laughs> yeah, we uh, again we're racing this week, Texas, Indiana. Next week we're racing, I think Georgia or FSU, and then the following week Georgia or FSU again. We have a week off, and then the Georgia Tech invite, which is our big one this fall. So yeah, and then the yeah. spring come spring you have SECs, SEC's NCAA's, and then the time. back into the USA may the Swim legacy grind. continue. Yeah, wonderful. I love so, to hear it. Well, cool. thank you so much. For thanks, really appreciate yeah, it. thanks for having me, guys. Awesome. So there you go. That's Maxine Rooney. We had an awesome time chatting with him. Harry, what did you think about the Maxine in- interview? Well, you know, I thought he had some pretty interesting things to say about, you know, like mental health and particularly about, you know, that transition from high school to college. That's something I've definitely talked about coaching wise with, you know, some of the high school age kids, you know, just kind of my experience going through that. Um, you guys swim a little bit longer into college, right? But I still think, you know, that first year is one of the biggest transitions of any person's swimming career right i mean aside from maybe you know if you get like really big right and have like a level of kind of like fame to you almost right yeah, exactly um i mean one of the things that's unique about maxine is that he's kind of one of those new breeds of swimmers right these swimmers are just yeah. just crazy fast at such a young age that they come into college swimming and they're already you know their time is basically already score in a final in ncaa's so someone like maxine came in with all this pressure all this added just you know yeah. You can't really enjoy college when you first get there. And so it's not really as, as easy as transition as, you know, going to your freshman year of high school. It's like going to job and going to practice and also being met with all this new academic stress. Exactly. That's yeah. what I was going to say, right, is you have to take everything that's an adjustment for swimming. Yep. And then you stack that on top of the adjustment in life, right, of being more on your own and you have to be more independent and kind of like taking care of yourself. Right. So those together, you know, is a fairly unique situation for student athletes like swimmers or you know anybody in a sport yeah i mean when it came to you especially i know like the transition to college is obviously always going to be shocking but college swimming is a completely different mindset i mean you were met with new training heavy new academics because of what you were trying to do as a major and then obviously someone like maxine can uh basically speak to it from an an elite level and national yeah yeah well and something that he talked about that i remember is right since he was part of that elite group already coming in um, it was difficult for him to distinguish, well, do I kind of do the same thing? Do I try to keep doing the same thing that I was doing before? But, you know, I'm in a different program. You know, I got to fully submerge myself into this new type of training. And I guess, obviously, he had to do this new type of training. But in terms of mentality, he found that for him, yep. right, it was better to, hey, let me just act as if I was, you know, still in high school growing up when I was doing super well. So, um, and that worked for him, right? He, he performed very well in college as well. Yeah, yeah, it's basically just embracing being the kid that... He was going in yeah. and just enjoying the, the swimming. And ride. how much, you know, you embrace that change, yep. right? You know, how much do you hold on to where you're coming from and how much do you really just kind of say, hey, let's do something new and see where it takes us. Exactly. So there you guys have it. That's our very first interview on the Flex Swim yeah. podcast. If you guys have been joining the podcast, please, please, please come on over and subscribe on your favorite podcasting network um, and leave as many comments as you'd like in the YouTube uh, comments section. We're going to be answering as many comments as we can yep. on a weekly basis. Um, yeah. Hey, I mean, even if you have somebody you think would be cool to get on and, and speak yep. to, right. You know, we can't guarantee that we can get yeah. just anybody, you know, <laughs> but we have pretty good access to a lot of different uh, people in the swimming world. So let us know and, you know, maybe we'll see what we can do. Yep. So thanks to Maxine Rooney. Thank you everybody for watching. Yeah, and thanks listening. guys. And we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. See yeah. ya.